Hey everybody, Metal Jesus here, and today I thought it might be kind of fun to take a look at my entire Nintendo handheld collection. Now, I've been collecting for a while now, and I have most of the main models that Nintendo released, and trust me, there are a lot of them, uh, but I don't have all of them. Instead, I kind of focus on the ones that I'll actually use, and you'll see that in this video, because many of them are modified to basically play a little bit better, especially when it comes to the screens. Plus, I do have a couple special edition ones, some that are a little bit hard to find today, and also some that are, wow, really out there. So let's take a look. Now, I don't have any of the classic Game & Watch handhelds that Nintendo put out, mainly in the 1980s. Uh, I did pick up one many years ago. I found it in a thrift store, but I gave that to uh, to Reggie as a birthday present. And it's just something that I didn't grow up with and I haven't really been interested in collecting myself. Although, as you can see here, I did pick up the new uh, Super Mario Brothers one that Nintendo put out a couple years ago, just because that is such a great tribute to one of the greatest games of all time. And before you ask, yes, I do plan on picking up the upcoming Legend of Zelda one, uh, if possible. Thankfully, the Super Mario Brothers one has been relatively easy to find, unlike many other special edition uh, Nintendo handhelds in the past. Moving on to the original Game Boy, I actually have three of them in my collection and you see a boxed one here that I found at a garage sale many, many years ago, um, pretty much complete in great condition. That was a bit of a surprise. And again, just a fantastic find at a garage sale. I should note that this one actually stopped working on its own, just sitting in a drawer. And I guess that's fairly common with these, you know, early Game Boys, but thankfully Cody from Pink Gorilla Games was able to fix this one and the one I'm gonna show you next. So here is the actual Game Boy that I typically use because as you can see here, it is backlit. And that makes such a difference as you can imagine, you know, I get it that the original Game Boy didn't have a backlit screen. That was just kind of what they did back then because that was kind of the best that you could do, especially considering how many batteries that they would use. Uh, but this is the one that I like to use because it's obviously way more playable. Moving on to the Game Boy Color, this is a lime green one that I have in my collection here. And I have to say that I really do like the, the look and feel of the Game Boy Color. Even though the original was not backlit, as you can see here, uh, I do really like the design of this. I, I like how, uh, and it's nice that they went from four batteries down to two. I like that little hump in the back. It's very comfortable using this, playing this for long periods of time with your hands. Uh, it's just a very elegant and well-designed handheld. However, not having a backlit display, well, that kind of sucks. So it's nice having this purple one here that has a, uh, a backlit screen on it. And so again, if I'm gonna be playing the Game Boy Color, it's gonna be this purple one that I'll use 99% of the time. Now you'll notice that I don't have the Game Boy Pocket or the Game Boy Light. Those are ones that I've been kind of on the lookout for, but instead I moved on to the Game Boy Advance. And I've said this before, and I'll say it again, this is definitely one of my favorite designed handhelds from Nintendo. I like the fact that the controls are on the left and the right of the screen. It's just so comfortable to play. But again, not having a backlit screen is definitely a bummer. Um, also, I don't know what it is about these Game Boy Advances, but it's so easy to lose the battery cover on these. Uh, almost every one that I've ever bought used is missing the battery cover. And so you'll see tape, like you see here, to hold them in. I just, that's just a bit of a design flaw in my opinion. And then here's a special edition Game Boy Advance I found at a garage sale many, many years ago. Uh, as you can see here, this is the Pokemon Center New York one. Uh, but again, like I said, for whatever reason, you know, it doesn't have the battery cover on the back. Kind of annoying, but that's just what you get when you go out to garage sales. Uh, I do want to point out though, that one of the cool accessories to the Game Boy Advance, at least the original one, is the e-reader. You see it here. And so this is definitely a bit of an oddity. I'm not entirely sure why Nintendo did this. I guess to 
try to make these cards collectible. And I guess over the years they have become a little bit collectible, but you see a bunch of them here. And essentially what you would do is use the e-reader to unlock uh, basically just extra stuff in your Game Boy Advance games. And so you would unlock additional levels. Maybe you would unlock, say, you know, an outfit or something like that. They had a bunch of these, and I know people are really big on collecting them. And they're, again, they're definitely an oddity. Now, this is where things get really interesting for my Game Boy Advance collection. You see two of them here. Uh, on the left there, you see an NES styled one. And on the right, you see a Famicom styled one. So these were custom made and created by a website called Rose Colored Gaming. Now, I don't think these were officially licensed by Nintendo at all. And they no longer sell them on their website and they haven't for several years. But I have to tell you, the quality in the paint on these is just so good. It's so professional looking, honestly, they look like they came straight from Nintendo. It's actually kind of a shame that Nintendo didn't actually release these because I think they would have been extremely popular. And as you can see, it also has an updated backlit screen. So these are just fantastic and some of the highlights of my entire handheld collection. And then you may remember a couple years ago, I teamed up with a modding website called retromodding.com and Olivier who runs that basically wanted to kind of highlight all of his modding skills. And we created a couple of these. I say we because I work with them to choose some of the components of it, but really he and his team built it completely. And so you see one of those here. And so there's a lot going on here. And as you can see, it has an updated screen, but it also has a piece of glass over that. So it's more scratch resistant. It has uh, updated buttons, both on the face and also the shoulder. Um, it has a speaker amplifier in there, so the, the sound is much louder and much clearer. And then one of my favorite things that it has is the rechargeable battery. And then I think about a year later, he decided to take it even a step further and create this. So this is the Metal Jesus Rocks edition of this very special Game Boy Advance here, which as you see, it, it says free play tech right there. So what's going on? is that when you turn this one on, instead of being a normal Game Boy Advance, it actually has a modified special version of Raspberry Pi. And it also plays my theme song. And so this is a very small Raspberry Pi computer that allows you to run ROMs and ISOs. Plus it has the custom case, which you can kind of see through it there. I like how it's kind of, kind of gray, smoky color. Uh, it has the rechargeable battery in it. Uh, it has, you know, swapped out buttons. Just a really cool tech demo that is pretty awesome. Moving on to another one of my all time favorite Nintendo handhelds is the Game Boy Advance SP. You see my original one here that I got day one and played hundreds, if not thousands of hours on that handheld. I loved it so much. But it was a couple years later that I discovered the much improved Model 101. It just has a much better screen, a much brighter screen than the original one. And then here's my SpongeBob SquarePants edition of the Game Boy Advance SP. This is one that I was looking for for several years. Finally was able to find someone who would uh, sell it to me. So I was very grateful to find one of those. And again, it has that beautiful 101 screen. Uh, yeah, just, it still looks great today. It still looks beautiful. By the way, a curious add-on for the Game Boy Advance is this wireless adapter. So you could plug this into the back of the Game Boy Advance and then you could communicate with other people who also had them. You wouldn't need the link cable. And then I never did get the Game Boy Advance Micro. I remember when they released, but I was like, why are they making them smaller? I want a bigger screen. Now, of course, they're very collectible. Instead, what I did is I, I jumped all in on the original DS. We're talking about the original gray one. Uh, I, I got that probably day one when it came out because I was such a GBA fan. I was excited to see what Nintendo was gonna do with two screens and a stylus and all the things. You know, looking back on this, the original though looks weird. Like it has weird curves and angles that, is, doesn't really feel very Nintendo. 
looking back on this, this just has a kind of an odd look, don't you think? And then here's a blue one that I picked up recently in the box. I think it looks better in blue, but again, I played hundreds, if not thousands of hours, you know, originally on the DS. As a gaming handheld, it was really fun. It was very, very innovative for the time. I still think it is today. Um, it's great to have these in the collection. I love all the games that are on it too. You know, I think over time, Nintendo and the developers figured out how to correctly use that lower screen and not make it feel so gimmicky. And then here's my DSi in a kind of baby blue. I'm not sure if I actually like that color or not, but man, I remember again playing on this for probably a couple of years for sure. You know, one of the big changes is that they removed the, the Game Boy Advance cartridge slot. So at this point, it really only supports DS games. And I remember being kind of disappointed in that at the time because I did still play a lot of GBA games on the DS, but Nintendo got rid of it. I, I suppose it was time to do so. And then here is a special edition Super Mario Brothers 25th anniversary DSi XL. So this is the larger version of the DSi and you can see them side by side here. So it was definitely a upgrade. Now this one on the left here, uh, Kinsey and I actually found this again at a Seattle garage sale. Her and I went out one Saturday, this is several years ago, uh, found this at a garage sale. And uh, actually, we kind of fought over it a little bit to see who was going to take it home. And uh, thankfully, she let me have it. So it's a very cool addition to, to the game collection for sure. Now, when it comes to the 3DS, I actually didn't get the original version of it. I skipped about a year there because I played it at a GameStop and I, I thought that the 3D effect was just something that would give me a massive headache. So I skipped over that one and instead waited till they put out the XL edition of the 3DS. So this is my original one here. Uh, I really do like this kind of darker red color. And this is where I fell in love with the 3DS because I actually do really like the 3D effect on here. I like how it, it you know, probably with the bigger screens and also I guess it tracks your eye better. It, it doesn't give me a headache. I actually like the effect quite a bit. And then as soon as it was announced, I ran out and bought this special Yoshi edition of the 3DS XL. And I really love this one. I love Yoshi as a character, uh, but I just think that this is a really cool 3DS. And then Nintendo did something surprising. They released this 2DS. This is a slab-like version of the 3DS without the 3D capabilities. And you know, when this was announced, when it came out, I was like, what's the point of that? Why would you get this? And so I actually ignored it for several years until just recently, I actually picked up two of these primarily because so many people said they're very comfortable. And now that I've owned them for a while, I have to agree. These are probably some of the most comfortable handhelds that Nintendo has ever made. And they are definitely a bit of an oddity. You know, I'd, I'd be kind of curious to know how well they did in the marketplace. It seems like I don't know. I mean, it seems like they are around for maybe a year or two and then they kind of vanished. And then we have the Nintendo Switch. I actually have two of them. Uh, you see the original one that I bought here. I got this fairly soon after launch. I was lucky to get one. I know that at the time they were a little bit difficult to find. And, you know, no surprise here. I actually love the original Nintendo Switch. I think this is a brilliant handheld. I just think it's so versatile. Uh, both in its function and also the games that it's able to play. In many ways, actually, this is probably the best handheld that Nintendo has ever made because it has elements of almost all of them. And as you can see here from this screenshot, I have lots and lots of Nintendo Switch games. Uh, it gets used several times a week, sometimes several times a day. Uh, I'm just so tempted to get games on it because again, it's so versatile. I can play it in handheld mode and also in docked, which I do. And because I was playing it so much, my wife got interested in it as well, but I didn't really wanna give up mine to share with her. So we ended up picking up the Switch Lite you see here. And overall, this is a fine handheld. Although honestly, I do wish that it still had the detachable Joy-Cons. It's kind of annoying that this isn't really dockable. It's only, you know, you can only use it in handheld mode, which again is, kind of the, the whole point of the Switch, but I know these are popular and it's cool to have. 
And so that's a quick look at my entire Nintendo handheld collection. And as you can see here, I cover pretty much every single model. I'm missing a couple here and there, but that's the fun of collecting because once expos open up and we get out in the world a little bit more, I will be looking to fill in some of those that I'm missing because I am a total Nintendo fanboy. It's so much fun collecting these. But I would love to know what you have in your game collection. Are there some really cool special editions or colors that you have? Let me know down in the comments below. And as always, guys, I want to thank you for watching my channel. Thank you for subscribing and take care.